we wanted to introduce ourselves, but thank you for taking over that part. That's great. <laughs> Actually, we save more time. Um, yeah, so we both work on a project called Irini, and this is a thing that we want to talk about today. The topic is Irini versus Diego, or Irini or Diego, how to choose the best fitting container scheduler. So, uh, I think I need to turn it on first before it works. Sorry. There we go. Yes, we, lo we love colors. Uh, we'll talk about why container orchestration at all. We'll talk about what options you have today with Cloud Foundry and what options you have with Irini. Um, we'll do a comparison uh, between Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes and Kubernetes and Diego. And finally, we will go to the use cases and tell you about when to use Diego and when to use Irini. But before we start to talk about all that stuff, let's talk about lunchboxes. So this is a lunchbox, and it's not any lunchbox, it's my son's lunchbox. And I think lunchboxes are really cool because I can take my son's favorite food and put it in there. I can close it, and I have a small uh, portable lightweight thing that isolates my food. And I can prepare the food in the evening, and I can put it in the fridge where it's isolated from all the other food, right? <laughs> That's really cool. And in the morning when he goes to school, I can take from the fridge and put it in the back and it's still isolated. Awesome. And from there, my son can take it to school, he can take it to the playground, he can take it to the beach. Basically, he can take it to every place in the world and have lunch. That's cool. That's the cool thing about lunchboxes. But why do I talk about lunchboxes? Well, I think that their characteristics can be easily applied to containers that we run in the cloud, right? They're lightweight, they provide isolation, they're portable. And um, just as you package your lunch into a lunchbox, you can package your app into a container with the runtime and everything that you need to actually run the app, right? So, and when you have an image, you can actually run that container uh, on your personal machine. You can run it on Kubernetes. You can run it on Docker Swarm or any other container orchestrator on the market. And this is where you have to uh, make a decision which container orchestrator do you want to use to run your container. And it's not that easy like, like a lunchbox where you just decide I want to eat it in the park. I mean here this is computers and computers are hard and you have to make a decision and it is a hard decision because um, Container orchestrators are different in their architecture, in their operational model, in their tooling. They have different benefits, different downsides, depending on what con container orchestrator you want to choose, right? But at the end, they do all the same thing, right? They're just, they're just two container scheduling, right? And as a developer, especially on Cloud Foundry, I don't care about the scheduling. I just want that UX. I just want to push my app into the cloud. I don't care what the Cloud Foundry does and where it, where it runs. But who cares here if the dev developer doesn't? It's obviously the operator. The operator cares about what con container scheduler do I use. And of course, he needs to make decisions. Do I have the right skill set for the scheduler that I need? Which kind of complexity? Or do, do I need a lightweight um, container scheduler or orchestrator? Such questions he need to, uh, he, such decisions he needs to make when he chooses a container orchestrator. But today, with Cloud Foundry, you have only Diego, right? So, wouldn't it be nice that Cloud Foundry has like a plug-in point where you just can say like, I will just use another container orchestrator than Diego, something like an API where you can say, yeah, I want Diego, or no, I want Kubernetes, or potentially any other container orchestrator. And we just call it OPI. It's Orchestrator Provider Interface, such like Bosch has a CPI, which is Cloud Provider Interface. So, and yes, this is exactly what Irini is. Irini is, uh, uh, makes the Container Orchestrator for Cloud Foundry Swappable, and today it comes with a Kubernetes backend. And at this point, I don't want to go much more in detail about Irini. There were other talks. And uh, yeah, we don't need to speak more about this, but 
I think for operators, it's important to see how the, arch uh, how the ar architecture of Cloud Foundry itself looks, looks like if you use Irini. So this is how Cloud Foundry looks like today. And we're interested in these components, which are the Diego components, uh, in sync, uh, auctioneer, uh, sales, garden, BBS. So how does this look like with Irini? It's like this. So you have Irini, which is the bridge between Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. It keeps everything in sync. And you have the bit service. It's the master of the blobs. It has the droplets. And it gives you a container representation of your application. And Irini makes use of that. It tells Kubernetes where he gets the image from. And Kubernetes replaces all the Diego bits. Great. So why Kubernetes? Um, so Kubernetes has its origins in the Google Borg and Omega scheduler. Um, they're not open source schedulers, but they are, there are many papers out there, and you can read that they're around for plenty, as many, many years, like I think almost 20 years. And actually, all the experience of those two schedulers flowed into Kubernetes, and I think that's probably a good reason why uh, uh, Kubernetes is such a good uh, orchestrator. It has one of the biggest open source communities. Um, it works on any cloud, even Amazon has it, right? So you can basically run it everywhere. And it's kind of becoming a standard, or it is probably already the standard. All right. So is, what, what is Kubernetes exactly? Is it uh, just an orchestrator? No, there's more to it. Is it a platform? Uh, kind of. It is a platform platform. It is a platform to build platforms. And Casely Hightower just recently uh, tweeted that Kubernetes is for people building platforms. If you're a developer building your own platform like Cloud Foundry, right here, then Kubernetes is for you. <laughs> and that's exactly what we do with projects like CF Containerization and Irini. And now you have a rough idea where to put uh, Kubernetes and where to put Cloud Foundry, it's not next to each other. It's like you should put uh, Cloud Foundry on top of Kubernetes. And to make this more clear, uh, Georgi will now do the comparisons. All right. <coughs> so despite that quote by Kelsey, there has still been quite a lot of comparisons between Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes in the last couple of years. And even though they have many things in common, it still feels like the comparison is not very fair. Because on one hand, you have a fully-fledged pass in the case of Cloud Foundry. And on the other hand, you have Kubernetes, which is somewhere in between the IaaS and past years. In fact, if you take Diego out of Cloud Foundry, you'll find out that uh, Kubernetes shares more things with Diego than with the rest of Cloud Foundry. And that makes sense, right? Because now you're comparing two things that have a common end goal, the, to manage the life cycles of your containers. Now, the CF versus Kubernetes comparisons are still not without some merits, because mainly because Kubernetes has so many features, and some of these features are quite common to pass offerings, like Cloud Foundry. For example, they both provide different methods for load balancing, they both have namespacing capabilities, and they have different authentication strategies. But fundamentally, for both of them, the platform abstraction is placed at a different level. For Cloud Foundry, the platform abstraction is placed at the application level, which means that Cloud Foundry only cares about building and deploying fully configured applications, while with Kubernetes, the platform abstraction is placed at the container level, which is much lower level than the application one. And another big difference, and this is probably uh, the, the difference that some of you have found out if you ever tried using Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes, and this is the user experience. Uh, Cloud Foundry makes it extremely easy for you to just focus on your code and just push to the cloud without having to care about how it's happening on the back end. With Kubernetes, this is not the case. Even if you want to push the simplest of apps uh, in Kubernetes cluster, you still have to be aware about the inner workings of, of the platform. And this is usually not something that you want to do uh, if you just want to focus on your code. But anyway, this is not actually the comparison we're interested in right now. We're much more interested in the other intersection, and that's between uh, Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry's own container scheduler, which is Diego. And they actually have quite a lot of things in common. So we'll start with the similarities. The first one is the architecture. They both share a quite similar architecture. Um, they implement the so-called advanced monolithic scheduling model, uh, which is basically means that the cluster state is stored in a centralized store. 
and you have a control plane of decoupled components uh, which uh, act on it. And one of these components is uh, known as the scheduler, and the scheduler responds to cluster changes and basically tries to correct the discrepancies between the actual uh, states of the object in the, in the cluster uh, as the desired ones. And it accesses the cluster state through a central API. And the reason for having a central API here is because of consistency reasons and because it simplifies the whole architecture. The second big similarity is that they both try to solve the beam packing problem, which means that both Diego and Kubernetes are smart enough to know where to place your container in order to utilize the system resources as best as possible and without sacrificing, the, uh, without sacrificing availability in the process, of course. And uh, the third similarity is that they have self-healing capabilities, which means that if your app crashes for some reason, it will get automatically restarted for you. And they can both scale your app up or down for you uh, based on, uh, in order to balance incoming load or just to suit demand. So as you can see, they both have, they both share uh, the core functionalities that you would expect from a container scheduler. But when you start going beyond the core functionalities, you start seeing some differences. And this is the, actually the interesting part. And the first big difference is that Diego is tailored to suit the exact Cloud Foundry needs which means that Diego doesn't have anything more than Cloud Foundry requires it to. And it also means that because of this pact between Cloud Foundry and Diego, uh, Diego can make assumptions and optimizations. And that's good because that way it reduces complexity and pain. And the, the key assumptions that Diego make, um, one of the key assumptions is that you're always running 12-factor apps. While on the other hand, Kubernetes was designed to be as, generic, as general purpose and generic as possible. And it doesn't care about the apps you're running. You, whatever you provide it to, it, it, it will run it. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's 12-factor or stateful or whatever. And this is especially interesting for some people that are interested in running apps that are not strictly 12-factor. The other big difference is in the flexibility of the scheduling model. And Kubernetes has the notion of uh, affinity, taints, and tolerations, which allow you to say which node should schedule your pods, or alternatively, you can say um, for, such, for one node, which pods it shouldn't schedule at any cost. And Diego has the um, notion of isolation segments. And isolation segments can uh, allow you to run apps on specific compute resources. But it's not as flexible as the Kubernetes way. And it also requires some additional operator setup in advance. Uh, third big difference is in the Windows support. There has been uh, some uh, progress in the Kubernetes community uh, about adding Windows uh, containers, but it's still quite limited. There are still quite a lot of uh, core Kubernetes resources that, that don't work very well with Windows containers. And on the other hand, Diego, since it uses Garden containers, um, Garden containers have much fuller and richer support for Windows. And last but not least, uh, Kubernetes is huge. It this is just a small portion of the things you can interact with in Kubernetes. And you can even define custom resources. So the list just goes on. Um, and this can be a good or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. It can be a good thing if you want to have all this flexibility to deploy your app uh, whatever you however you want. Or it can be a bad thing because now you have all these new things to worry about, all these new things to manage and operate. So we've gone through some of the similarities and differences. And we saw that they have strengths in some fields and uh, weaknesses in other fields. And I guess the logical question is, so which one is it? Uh, which one should you choose and which one is better? And in the words of Morpheus himself, should you choose the Diego pill? Wake up in your bed tomorrow and just continue living your life? Or choose the Kubernetes pill, enter Wonderland, and discover how deep the rabbit hole goes? And for me, the the answer here is pretty obvious. And it obviously depends. And it depends on your use case. So let's go to the use case. All right. So let's start with the Diego use cases. So when should I use Diego? And for that, let's first take a look at, again, the Cloud Foundry architecture today. And I hope you recognize this red thing here, that it's deployed on Bosch. It's important because for your later use cases. So. Diego, first use case. I only deploy 12-factor apps. I use services 
why should I get a Kubernetes beast? I'm happy. Don't use other scheduler than Diego. It's tailored for that use case. Cloud Foundry is made for that, so you're fine. Next use case is I want Bosch. I love Bosch. And I want to use Bosch continuously, so yeah, I don't want to use Kubernetes. The next thing goes hand in hand with that one. It's I have no Kubernetes skills. <laughs> even, even if I want a Kubernetes, I don't have the skills. I have Bosch skills, so I stick with Diego, right? Next use case, Windows containers. If you want to run them, probably a better choice, Diego. Cool. So, use cases for Irini. When do I use Irini? We, t we thought about use cases for Irini and we came up with a matrix, a skill matrix. And it goes like this. If you have skill in Bosch, but not in Diego, but in Kubernetes, or you have Bosch skills and Diego skills and Kubernetes skills, or you don't have Bosch skills, then you have no Diego skills, but you have Kubernetes skills, or you don't have any skills at all, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, it's, it's confusing, I know. And I promise this will be more, much clearer now when we go through each of those. All right, let's start with the first one. It's not supported yet, but people are working on it. What is it? Um, yeah, skills in Bosch and Kubernetes, but not in Diego. That means you're probably like an operator for Bosch and Kubernetes. You run CFAR and CFCR. And you don't have any Diego skills and probably you have something like this. You have your Bosch deployed Cloud Foundry. You have another Kubernetes around. You deploy all your 12 factor apps with Cloud Foundry. Everything else, you use Diego, eh, Kubernetes, sorry. And yeah, now you have like two, you, you have two schedulers, right? You have the Diego bits, you have um, Kubernetes. So why not doing this? Use Irini and reuse the existing Kubernetes cluster that you have and schedule all your apps to. Kubernetes. All right. This has some benefits. You have a unified orchestrator and a reduced overall fo footprint because you get rid of all the Diego bits. Great. Um, downsides still, like before, you have two different technologies, two different operational models, two different communities that you have to worry about. So. It's not the optimal reason, but still, if you have a Kubernetes and a CF, it would be preferable if you could like use Irini to schedule all your apps into the Kubernetes cluster. Cool. The next use case will All right. Take so over. for the next use case, you have SKUs in everything. You can operate both uh, all of uh, Bosch and Diego and Kubernetes. And you probably don't want to do that, because that's just too much of work and overhead to do it. And the best thing to do here is just just operate one, one of these things. So, and in this case, well, this one thing will be Kubernetes. So let's see how we can do that. First, about Bosch. Uh, there's a pretty nice project uh, called CF Containerization. And it allows you to take existing Bosch releases and convert them to Docker images and Helm charts. And uh, you, then you can deploy these Docker images and Helm charts to a Kubernetes cluster. So what this does is basically packages the whole Cloud Foundry, Cloud Foundry application runtime as containers instead of virtual machines. On the left, we have the Cloud Foundry as we know it today. And on the right, we have containerized Cloud Foundry. And as you can see, uh, the, all the Cloud Foundry components are actually absolutely the same. Nothing changes there. The only thing that changes is how you deploy them. On the left, you deploy them with Bosch as virtual machines. And on the right, you deploy them as, uh, with Kubernetes as containers. And this has some pretty nice benefits. You, again, get smaller memory footprint because containers are much more lightweight than uh, virtual machines. And you still keep the same uh, developer experience. You, if, as a developer, when you CF push to a containerized Cloud Foundry, you still s uh, get the same CF push. You don't see a difference. And that's how it should be. And also, if you're already a Kubernetes operator, then this will be good news for you because now you have one less thing that you have to learn and you can reuse your ex existing skills in Kubernetes in order to operate this Cloud Foundry. It's not all perfect though. Uh, we still have Diego and that means that you still have two schedulers to maintain, both Diego and Kubernetes. And uh, also when you CF push, since it's going through Diego, 
Eventually, your app will end up in a garden container, which is running in a Docker container, which is running in a Kubernetes spot, which is not the best thing if you want to debug that. So that's where Irini comes in. And that's actually the perfect use case for using Irini if you have a containerized Cloud Foundry. And with Irini, as we saw, all the Diego bits are removed. And now we have Irini. And when you see push, uh, the Cloud Controller points to Irini, which creates a native Kubernetes object on the same cluster that's actually running your Cloud Foundry. And that's how you get a Kubernetes native implementation of Cloud Foundry. And you have a consistent operator experience because now you can just focus on operating one thing. And you get best of both worlds because the CF push is not changed at all, which makes the developers happy. And the whole Cloud Foundry can be operated uh, with just Kubernetes, which makes the operators happy. And also this opens the possibility some uh, uh, new things. For example, deploying microservices pod Kubernetes, Kubernetes Cloud Foundry. And this is a talk we had, uh, me and Jules had yesterday. So in case you're interested in that, you can probably find it on YouTube in a few days. And you would think that installing th this whole thing, this whole containerized Cloud Foundry with Irini would be hard, but it's actually not. The only thing you need is two Helm installs, a few minutes, and then you have a running uh, Kubernetes native implementation of Cloud Foundry in your cluster. And for more detailed instructions, you can go to our Irini release repo and take a look there. So the next use case is actually pretty similar to the previous one. It's just uh, looking at it from a different point of view. If you're someone that's coming from the Kubernetes, um, uh, Kubernetes uh, community, um, you, it's not a secret that you will probably need a pass, a great pass. And Cloud Foundry can be that great pass. But previously, uh, with Bosch and Diego, uh, the transition was not very smooth. And now with Irini in containerized Cloud Foundry, uh, as we saw with the previous use case, it's much easier. Uh, you get the whole Cloud Foundry as, um, in Kubernetes, and you get your apps running as Kubernetes nat native objects. So that's perfect, uh, the perfect time for someone that's just using Cloud Foundry to, uh, uh, that's just using Kubernetes to try out Cloud Foundry. And the last use case is when you don't have any skills at all. You don't know how to operate uh, Bosch. You don't know how to operate Diego and Kubernetes. Or maybe you don't want to do that. And what do you do in that case? You let someone else do it. And <laughs> there are a lot of Kubernetes uh, service offerings out there from uh, IBM and SAP and uh, Microsoft and Google and so on. And they can all potentially be used with Irini. That way, you can have your own Cloud Foundry that you can uh, manage and administrate. And someone else can do the scheduling bits. And someone else can do the cluster administration. And you, you sh shouldn't care about this. Or if you want to take it a step further, uh, now uh, you can use Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment, which comes with Kubernetes Cluster, Containerized Cloud Foundry, and now with Irini. So that's pretty cool. And summarize. Summary. Oh, can you hear me? Great. Uh, so in summary, this is first thing is that this is the first talk about Irini without a demo. <laughs> Seriously, so just recognize it. Um, yeah. So scheduling is commoditized, and we should abstract away the scheduling bits. And this is exactly what Irini does. Um, and there is no best scheduler. It really depends on your use case. And you shouldn't just follow the hype. You should choose the scheduler that fits your needs. And this is the summary. With that, thanks for listening. And I think we have another four minutes for questions. Uh, that Dr. Jules will probably answer. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we have another four minutes for questions. So if there are any questions, we're up. All right. Thanks, you two. Uh, in case you have a question, I'm happy to bring a mic to you such that you don't have to scream at us all. Questions? schedule to go prod. Yeah, I didn't get it. Could, uh, yeah, could you repeat the question again a little bit louder? I just didn't uh, hear When is the Irene project scheduled to go prod? To go prod? Huh. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so um, we're still really early. And um, yeah, I've, maybe Dr. Jules has any plans. <laughs> 
because Yes, so the answer was we go as fast as we can. It's now alpha available on IBM Cloud. Yeah, and we try to give our best to get it production ready as soon as possible. Yes. Have you guys looked at the new use cases that might be enabled by having Kubernetes under the covers and with all the auto scaling Kubernetes might provide and all the other primitives that Kubernetes provides and how that might benefit Cloud Foundry from an operator's point of view in scaling? Um, if we took a look, uh, not yet. <laughs> so, the, so basically we could enable every feature that Kubernetes basically provides, of course, but there are no plans yet in that state to actually support it, but there's like, of course it could happen. In cases of like resource contention on a pod, will Kubernetes be able to prioritize keeping the um, like, components like CAPI and other like CF components alive above keeping app containers alive? Um, well, I guess that's more of a question for the containerization team. Yeah, CF containerization. Yeah, because yeah. we just use them to yeah. deploy our color foundry, but we are only responsible for running the app bits. Exactly. Um, is the functionality that's being built, and you kind of alluded to this at the beginning of your talk, being built in a way that you could theoretically swap in a any container orchestration platform, uh, yeah. pro provided that it implements some e set of APIs, or? Yes, so yeah. we have this OPI currently in our code bases, and theoretically, you could like plug in any other orchestrator, but currently we're just focusing on Kubernetes for the reasons that we said, but yes, we could. Yeah. And actually, there was already a like a prototype for Knative, for example, and it works. And you could like basically plug in any scheduler. PRs are welcome. Yes, so we're right on time. If maybe one last question, but other than that. All right. Doesn't seem like it. Thank so you for attending this talk. Thanks.